everybody, this is the Vitans. What do I think about the Marx Brothers movies? I generally think that they are very entertaining comedies that holds up surprisingly well, despite being almost a century old. You can make a pretty strong argument that the earliest movies that are a little bit too much of their vaudeville sketch and doesn't have a good you know, story in it, uh, aren't as good as the other ones. And you can also make an argument that the act got a little stale after a while and some of the later movies, including you know, A Night in Casablanca and A Day at the Department Store, are not, you know, comedy gold. But there are a couple of movies that they have done that are absolutely fantastic. A Day at the Races is not one of them, but it is a very good comedy that has a few problems that it cannot quite conquer. But for the most part, I'm very entertained by this movie. So we shall take a look today on one of the most famous Marx Brothers movies, even though it's not the best. This is A Day at the Races. a sanitarium located next to a racetrack which is in dire straits and it's going to be you know uh, taken over by the evil Mr. Morgan who accidentally has the same type of evil mustache that Vince McMahon nowadays uh, is sporting. That's a weird coincidence but if she doesn't stamp out the cash in the next few days uh, she will lose the sanatorium but Jill the man she loves and a famous and very accomplished singer is sort of trying to you know finish his uh, singing career and has bought himself a race horse called hi-hat he hopes that uh, the horse will you know win races and you know earn the money so she can you know pay what she owns however the horse seems to be not a very good horse and she's kind of mad at him and kicks him out and you know stuff like that what is she going to do there is this rich hypochondric woman who you know is talking about you know uh, you know paying her debts and stuff like that but only if uh, the a famous and fantastic Dr. Hackenabus is coming to treat her. As she says, I've never had so many um, you know, conditions revealed to me before I you know, saw him. And uh, there's, they sent for him uh, from Florida. Uh, Hackenabus, of course, played by Groucho Marx, is not actually a doctor but a veterinarian and a bit of a quack also but he goes up there you know smelling that he can you know earn a lot of money here and easy money and groucho marx equals problems but uh, chico uh, who also works for the sanatorium and also you know, runs short cons down at the racetrack he is suspecting that um, uh, he's a fraud and you know tries to expose um, groucho marx uh, also on, on the racetrack, of course, works um, Jill's jockey, played by Harpo Marx. Um, but uh, then they decide to, you know, work together to try to, you know, make this horse successful and, you know, keep the secret that uh, he's actually a horse doctor away from uh, Morgan, who, by the way, the horse absolutely hates and goes insane whenever his face or his voice is, uh, you know, revealed to him. Uh, so how is this going to end? Are they going to be able to win the big race so, you know, that um, Judy can keep the sanatorium? Will Jill and June, you know, end up together again? We shall see. You can probably see where this one is going a mile away. And most of the Marx Brothers movies follows this, you know, pretty easy pattern. A Day at the Races is a classic Marx Brothers movies in the sense that it serves up all the things you come to expect. You know, uh, Chico plays the piano. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, we have hijinks. We have slapsticks. We have, you know, the puns and the insults from Groucho Marx, even though they're not as clever nor are they as memorable or uh, mean-spirited as they usually are. Harper feeling more like an alien than anything else and uh, you know uh, star-crossed lovers who you know are separated but will come back together again and in the end we will have a finale where everything is fixed and it's a little bit rushed and nobody is having any repercussions for anything that they have done throughout the entire movie and then the movie is over and everybody's kind of happy. So what are the small little problems with this movie? Well, I don't think that the slapstick and the uh, farcical sequences in this movie are quite as good as, you know, the best ones like Duck Soup or 
uh, A Night at the Opera. The, the best movie that they've ever done, by the way. But there is also the problem of the runtime. This movie is 111 minutes long. In my opinion, I think that a good Marx Brothers movie shouldn't clock in at more than 80 minutes because it feels a little bit too long for its own good. Not helped by the fact that we have a six minute song and dance number, uh, you know, with Jill singing and with the entire ballet thing, uh, then followed by another six minutes of Chico playing the piano because he has to play the piano and then Harpo sits down and plays the piano that then breaks down completely and turns into a harp so he can play the harp. That's another six minutes. And then we have the sequence, you know, when everything looks doom and gloomy for them and they're sitting there and then Jill starts singing another song that is incredibly boring. And then they, you know, go outside and they invite, you know, all these people out there. Uh, they have apparently come to a mostly black neighborhood because all these black people comes out and sings this very energetic song, which I think is, you know, some kind of an early jazz swing kind of a uh, number, which is also 10 minutes long, ending with all three Marx Brothers doing horrendously bad and I guess on purposely bad looking um, blackface, which turned this movie more from, you know, a day at the races to a day at the racist. Haha. <laughs> But um, uh, there is a lot of good things also in this movie. Whenever a movie's finale is a big race where the underdog has to win and stuff like that, that is always entertaining, it's always fun. And there's a lot of really impressive, kind of insane sequences there that I thought was really fun. And the Marx Brothers have really perfected their act and their characters down to a T. It's really professionally done and some of the jokes they do is absolutely hilarious. This movie has, for the most part actually, uh, survived pretty intact. This movie is a lot of fun, despite being quite predictable and a little bit too long and, you know, the sing and dance numbers are a little bit too excessive and doesn't add that much to the story. I love the Marx Brothers and I think that this is a very fun, entertaining movie, despite not being one of their absolute best. I think it is one of the better ones they've done and if you have never seen a Marx Brothers movie, this is a pretty good one to start with. It uh, gives you the, you know, characters and their motivations and you see, you know, some of the good things, not the greatest things. And if you, when you've seen this movie say I want to see more of them then you can see more of them and you can experience some of the really really good ones you're never bored and there is a lot of sequences in this movie where you're thinking to yourself how is this going to end and how are they going to get out of this predicament and sometimes the solutions are so insane that you say to yourself well only the Marsh Brothers could Somewhere I would like to give A Day at the Races more than 62 points, but I simply can't. The movie is too long and some of the jokes doesn't work as good as, you know, their better ones. But it is a fun movie, it is entertaining, and if you have a fast forward button you can always get past the song and dance number. That doesn't really add anything to the story and it's a bit boring. But for the most part I think this movie is very entertaining and it has aged surprisingly well. So which one is your favorite of the Marsh Brothers movies? Comment below and I'll see you next time from, well, so-and-so reviewing, well, such and such. Thank you for watching, thank you very much!